Peggy 16. Ten sixty six AD was a momentous year in British history. The Battle of Hastings and the Norman invasion of Britain closed the book on the Anglo Saxon era forever and began a new chapter in the formation of England as we know it today. Before the Normans came to England, however, the British Isles had endured three centuries of ceaseless turmoil at the hands of the Vikings. In 865 AD, a coalition army of Danish, Norwegian and Swedish warriors set sail with the singular intention of subjugating Britannia. Over the next 13 years, they would conquer many settlements around the mainland. The impact of the Viking invasions of the 860s in terms of English history going forward is, is very significant. The most important thing it does is it clears away every Anglo-Saxon kingdom except Wessex. After many defeats, a young King Alfred faced the great Viking army in 878 AD near the town of Eddington in Wiltshire. Forming his men into a densely packed shield wall formation, Alfred observed as the Vikings crashed against the impregnable Anglo-Saxon line. The Shield War was the epitome of Anglo-Saxon warfare. A strong line of troops, always with the house cars at the front in their finest male armour. It was an impenetrable force that was the key to winning battles. Sustaining heavy losses, the Viking leader Guthrum realised his forces were outmatched and his army retreated to nearby fortifications. Alfred's men gave chase and laid siege. After two weeks of dwindling supplies, the starving Scandinavians finally surrendered. The Viking invasion of Britain was over, even if England's troubles were not. For a time, it seemed like peace would reign. Alfred the Great showed mercy to the invaders, allowing them to settle peacefully in the east of England, which would come to be known as the Danelaw. That peace, however, would not last. The Danes continued to pursue their designs on England, but England pushed back. By the events of 1066, the Danelaw had been completely overtaken by the Anglo-Saxon. After centuries of struggle, the Anglo-Saxons finally held dominion over all England. 1066 was the year that changed everything, and it started with the death of a king. Edward the Confessor fell gravely ill, and there were several claimants who professed to be next in line to the throne of England. The first was Harold Godwinson of Wessex, he was close to Edward and popular with the people. Next was William, Duke of Normandy. He was a distant cousin of Edward's and claimed that Edward had promised him the throne, a claim the English naturally refuted. The claim um, that, that, that William the Conqueror has uh, to England is very, very weak. There's obviously the, the family connection with Emma of, of Normandy. And the, the real um, cause of the invasion is the opportunity. Last was Harold Hadrada, the King of Norway and a descendant of King Canute who had ruled England from 1016 to 1035 AD. Harold Hardrada had vague but very weak genealogical claims to the, the throne uh, of England. Edward chose Harold Godwinson to succeed him and died on the 5th of January 1066. Harold was crowned the very next day, spurring Duke William and Harold Hardrada to immediate action. Harold Godwinson uh, succeeded Edward the Confessor, uh, shaped that succession. Um, the Godwinson family, of which Harold was the leader, was already the most powerful family in England. William began by touring Normandy, currying favour with the nobles using promises of lands and titles. With their support, he began assembling an invasion force. However, catching wind of this, Harold Godwinson began building a defence force of his own. Summer passed into autumn and the invasion never came. In September of 1066, however, word came from the north while Harold Godwinson's attention was so firmly fixed on the Norman threat, Harold Hadrada had sailed from Norway to invade Northumbria. Harold marshalled his troops immediately. In a breathtaking feat of stamina, his army marched 185 miles in four days and directly into battle with the Norwegians at Stamford Bridge near York. The invaders were taken utterly by surprise. Harold Hadrada fell in battle, his forces destroyed or scattered but Harold Godwinson's decisive victory was short-lived. The Norman invasion force landed at Pevensey Beach and marched to Hastings to erect its fortifications. William even burned his own ships as a symbol of his commitment to victory. 
Hearing the news, Harold and his now ragged army raced south once again, pausing only in London to bolster their forces and resupply. On his way south, Harold took a detour via London to first gather more troops and secondly to reassure his nobles that, you know, everything was fine, he was going to win this battle, he was going to be king. Pressing south until he approached the Norman encampment, Harold arrayed his near-exhausted forces on Senlac Ridge, just outside the town now known as Battle, 10 miles from Hastings. As the Norman army approached the incumbent king, it became clear that Harold was hopelessly outnumbered. Worse still, William's army also contained cavalry and many archers, making it far more versatile. Harold's army had no choice but to adopt the tried and tested shield wall formation and hope to weather the coming storm. It began to look as if the battle might swing in Harold's favour. In the face of such a stout defence, the entire Norman left flank began to waver. Worse still, rumour spread amongst the ranks that William himself had been slain. The Duke's entire battle line fell back from the defiant Anglo-Saxon shield wall, and with a great roar, the defenders saw the retreat and broke ranks to pursue the routers. William was alive and well, however. Riding before his men, he urged them forward, and with renewed courage, the Norman soldiers turned to countercharge the Anglo-Saxons in open battle. But the shield wall had broken, and the exhausted English army was no match for the fresh troops and combined punch of William's more versatile army. The Bayeux Tapestry vividly depicts King Harold's gruesome end, struck in the eye by a Norman arrow before being ridden down by one of William the Conqueror's cavalrymen. The Battle of Hastings was over, and with it, the age of the Anglo-Saxons.